Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AnimeTutors.com and welcome to this video on completing a rate table using rate equations. So um, this video is pretty useful actually because you get quite a few of these types of questions uh, in exam papers. Um, and the idea is, is that actually you're given some um, data um, on a rate of reaction uh, of different experiments and the varied the concentrations in the reactions as well. Uh, and actually what they've done is they've given you some data as well and in this data uh, they've left some uh, blank spaces and you can see here that we've got some blank spaces here so this type of question we're effectively going to try and work out what these spaces are and we're going to use a really simple method um, and the, the kind of secret to this really is that you have to work out k first now k is the rate constant and even though it's got the word constant in there it actually really isn't constant um, it varies so um, and it depends on the conditions that you put it in it's effectively there to balance up the equation which is what constants do really but this one changes so for those physicists out there that you may see a lot of constants that are actually constant in chemistry it's uh, sometimes um, a little bit different so um, you can see here, let me just talk you through the table and the information that we've got here. And you can see that we've got experiments, and we've got four different experiments, and we've run these experiments. Um, and what we've done is we've actually altered the concentration of A and the concentration of B. Now, it doesn't really matter what A and B are. Um, these could be any reagents, really, but just for simplicity purposes, I've decided to just call it A and B. So this is the initial concentration, um, and this is measured in moles per dm cubed, and we've got A and B. Now you can see, all in a, if we have to do this in a practical sense, effectively we've got the concentration of A and the concentration of B, and these are the concentrations. We mix them together, uh, and then we look for, um, or we monitor the rate of reaction. Now this could be anything. This could be to do with uh, a colour change. It could be um, the amount of gas produced in a minute. Um, it depends on what the reagents are. Um, but effectively that's what we're looking out for and we're going to measure uh, how quick that reaction happens and this is called the rate uh, and you can see on this one that the rate of these two when, when we've got A and B in these ratio we get a rate of 2.68 times by 10 to the minus 4 um, right now you can see here that the examiners obviously aren't going to make it that easy for you um, and so what they're going to do is they're going to leave some spaces and I'm going to show you how to do that so the first thing is we need to work out K like we said um, before we do that, we need to know our rate equation. Um, now, the rate expression is basically tells us what order with respect to each reagent um, the, the, the rate expression is. So, uh, you, you would be given this or you would have worked it out prior to this. You can't look at an equation and deduce whether it's first or second order or zero order for that matter. So, um, they would either give you it or you would have to work it out with a previous question. So, look back and make sure you've, um, you've done that properly. So you can see here that we've got uh, our rate expression is K, concentration of A squared, so it's second order with respect to A, uh, and B, it's zero order with respect to B. Okay, so what we're going to do is work out K first. So I'm going to rearrange this expression to get K. So I'll do this in, um, so I'll do this in black so you can see it. So to rearrange it, we're going to take K, um, and actually we're going to put rate on the top, but what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to eliminate B. We don't need B, um, well we do, but it doesn't play any role in the actual calculation. Because it's zero order, so it has no effect on rate. So we can just ignore B. Anything with zero order has no effect. The mathematicians out there will know that if you multiply anything or have anything to the power of zero, it just gives one. So if I multiply A squared by one, you're just going to get A squared. So that, that's where it kind of fits in. So K equals rate, and this is going to be divided by A squared concentration of A squared. Okay, and all we have to do is then just pick a set of data where we can work out K. So we need a rate of something and A squared. Um, now, what we can do, if you look on here, the only one where we can actually use is this one here, this data. So we can work out K, which is the rate constant, uh, and this is gonna be rate 2.68 times by 10 to the minus four, and we're going to divide that by, um, and this is going to be A squared. So this is going to be 1.20, 1.20 times by 10 to the minus 3. And all of that is squared. All right, so what we can do, what we can do now is put that into a calculator, and I've worked this out already. So uh, K, in this case, and you can try it if you print the calculator, should be 186.1. And there we are. Right. Now the clever thing with this is that this constant 
this number is actually constant, so a little bit, uh, under certain conditions, so same temperature, same pressure, etc. And also according to this reaction here. So actually we can, so I suppose it is kind of like constant, we can use this number to work out everything else here, and that's gonna be really vital. So, um, they might not necessarily mention that in the exam either. That's another point. Um, when you're working these things out, they might not tell you to work out K initially. You might come later on in the question, but work out K, because as you'll see, it makes it so much easier when you're working these things out. Okay, so once we've done that, obviously then we need to work out obviously these parts here. So all we're gonna do is I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna label them. I'm gonna put A there. So if I just put E there, we have to work out the rate. Now this makes it pretty easy because we don't have to do any rearranging whatsoever. The rate of reaction number two, or experiment number two, is literally just whatever the value of K is times by A squared. So in this case, um, K is gonna be 186.1. So put that in there. Rate equals 186.1. Multiply that by A squared, the concentration of A squared, which is 1.20 times by 10 to the minus three. Okay, and then if we work that out, then our rate for A, for this one here, if we put that into our calculator, whoops, missed something out. That's supposed to be squared, because remember it's A squared, so that's supposed to be squared. Now if we put that in our calculator, again I've worked this out already, save time, it should be 2.68, and that should be times by 10 to the minus four. Okay, there you go. And that's A. B is actually the same. So again, I'll just quickly write this out. So B, again, we're working out the rate. So the rate is 186.1, and we're gonna multiply that by, now in B, A squared is 2.40 times by 10 to the minus three squared. So put that in there, 2.40 times by 10, uh, to the minus three, yeah. And again, that's going to be squared because it's A squared. That's the order of this reaction. So it's very important that you look at the actual rate expression as well. Again, put that in your calculator and we should find the value of B. Um, so the value here should be 1.07 times by 10 to the minus three. Okay, so try it, put it into your calculator, make sure it works. Okay, so let's, I'm just gonna rub these out. I'm just gonna put actually write in A here. So that's 2.68 times by 10 to the minus four. And B, we said was 1.07 uh, times by 10 to the minus three. Okay, and then on the final bit, which is C, you will call this C down here. Um, now this one is a little bit different because actually now what we've got is we have a rate and we have initial B, concentration B, uh, and we need to work out A. So we need to rearrange the equation in a slightly different way. So actually what we need to work out now is A squared. Remember that's A squared because it's from the rate expression. So if we rearrange that, omitting the B, then A squared will actually equal rate divided by K. Rate divided by K, there you go. Okay, so we've got uh, our rate, because we know the rate. The rate is 8.04 times by 10 to the minus four. So we'll put that in there. Times by 10 to the minus four. I'm gonna divide that by uh, K. Now K was, doo -doo -doo, there you go, 1.86.1. Uh, sorry, 186.1. You spit that one out, right, okay. So, um, what we do is we then put that into our calculator. Remember this is A squared. So A squared, if we put that into our calculator, is 4.32, 4.32 times by 10 to the minus six. So it's quite a small number. Right, now there's a bit of a problem with this and loads of people will probably miss this out. See this is A squared. And um, this value here is the value for a squared. We just want to work out the value for a just on its own. So we have to square root that number to work out the concentration of a. You can't forget that bit. Okay, so I'm going to put square root there. And if we square root that, what we should find is the value of just a, which is what we want. So the value of a should be 2.08 times by 10 to the minus three. 
and that's really important. Loads of people miss that bit out. Well, not loads of people, but some people, they, too many people, should I say. When it's such a simple thing to kind of, to work out, but it's often overlooked. And that's exactly what examiners are looking for. They're looking to see if you really do understand how these things work. Um, so there you go, there's all your numbers. Um, you can see it's pretty straightforward, but I suppose the key thing with this is that you work out K first, and once you've got K, you can then substitute into any of these equations here and use your rate expression to help you work these things out. That's it, bye bye.